It has been a blessing to be with you, and I thank the Lord for the opportunity to be able to be in Baltimore, Maryland. Praise God. And uh, the Lord has been good to us this week. He's moved. He's done things. He's worked in people's hearts and continues to do so as this morning. And we thank God for what he does and when he moves. I want you to turn to Isaiah. And we were already there this morning, the Sunday school hour, but Isaiah 53. And oftentimes we worry about, <clears throat> as Brother Shiflet said earlier, we often worry about what's going to happen to us when we get to the mission field. But Paul said he had a thorn in the flesh, but it didn't stop him. I've, met, I've read stories of men in uh, wartime, and they were injured and wounded, laying in the hospital, wanting to get better so they could go back to combat. When I was in Bulgaria, I got Lyme's disease, and I still have it today. And when I get very tired, it wears me down and makes me sick. But I want to be a soldier for Jesus Christ. Not a wimp. We, we live in a society of wimps. But God's, God's word commands us to be a soldier for Jesus Christ. And I want to be a soldier. And I know you do too. To continue on. Why? Because we're fighting for the right cause. Isaiah 53 Isaiah 53, and again, here we have a question. We had a question in Sunday school. Here's another question in the book of Isaiah. Isaiah 53, and let's look there in verse number one. The Bible said, Who hath believed our report, and to whom is the arm of the Lord revealed? Isaiah asks this question, Who hath believed our report? John chapter 12, verse 38 also says, he said that, the saying of Isaiah the prophet might be fulfilled, which he spake, Lord, who hath believed our report? And to whom hath the arm of the Lord been revealed? Again, in Romans chapter 10 and verse number 16, the question is asked one more time. He says, but they have not all obeyed the gospel, for Isaiah said, Lord, who hath believed our report? I'd like to preach just a little while this morning on who hath believed our report. Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for the goodness of God, what you've done this week. God, I've been able to have the opportunity to meet some missionaries this week that I didn't know before and share some thoughts and to Lord God them share some thoughts with me to help me in my Christian walk. God, I pray to Lord God that you'd help us. I pray as a group of people, the Lord God as a congregation of believers this morning, I pray, as we gather in the house of God, use the word of God, I pray. You said faith come by hearing and hearing by the word of God. My faith can only be increased by the word of God. There is no other way. And God, ask you, please, I pray that you'd help us, I pray, with the word this morning. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Many of you have been on visitation and witnessed on your jobs and witnessed in places of business and Oftentimes, when you walk away from that conversation, you ask yourself this question, who hath believed my report? Yeah, right. Your family, maybe your family. I know my, my parents, I've witnessed to them and talked to them. My mother is gone, but my father is still here. And many times I've had the opportunity to sit down with my father and give him the gospel. And when I walk away, I always ask myself, who hath believed my report? My lifestyle and what I say and what I do and my testimony and my witness. Who hath believed my report? This word report means this. It means to be heard. That is an announcement, a doctrine, a fame, a mention, news, report. 27 times in the verses of scripture, the word report is used first mentioned time, first time it was ever mentioned was Joseph bought an evil report against his brethren. Jesus Christ is our, Joseph is a type of Jesus Christ. And when he looks at our life, guess what he has? An evil report. 
But on December the 8th, 1984, in a cornfield in Walterboro, South Carolina, I accepted the Lord Jesus Christ as my Savior, and he no longer has an evil report to say. The report. The Bible talks about good reports. It talks about evil reports. It talks about an honest report. I thought about this. How about if you were in Bethlehem this morning or Nazareth or Capernaum or Jerusalem or Bethany or Bethsaida or on the shores of Galilee? Would you have believed the report? that a young virgin rode on the back of a donkey and came to a place, an inn, and there was no room, and they went in and had Christ, and Christ was born into this world. And your report was, the king of kings has been born in a stable in Bethlehem. I fair to say you would say, I don't believe that report. King of kings in a stable? Why not a palace? No, born in a stable. Maybe you were, could be in Rome or Ephesus or Philippi or Damascus or Corinth or Galatia or Thessalonica or Laodicean and heard a young man or an older man begin to preach the gospel of Jesus Christ. And the Bible says that Paul went to all, all these places and preached the gospel of Jesus Christ. And as you left that, would you believe the report? Paul said, on the road to Damascus, I saw a great light and the Lord Jesus Christ himself spoke to me and I surrendered all and got saved by God's grace. Would you believe the report? I fair to say we probably wouldn't. Maybe you were this morning in Los Angeles or New York or Detroit or Chicago, Baltimore, <laughs> Miami, St. Louis, Louisville, Charleston, Savannah. Maybe you were in those places and gathered together in the house of God and there'll be multiplied thousands of people gathered in the house of God this morning and they'll hear a message from the word of God but they'll walk out and the question will be asked, do you believe the report? Maybe you would have a friend like Adam or Noah, Abraham, Moses, Peter, Paul, John, Andrew. And these men walked with God and they begin to tell you things that they experienced. As Adam says, I walked in the cool of the garden with God himself. My question to you this morning is, would you believe that report? I think about men like George Whitfield, the priest of Benjamin Franklin, many times. But George, uh, Benjamin Franklin's own testimony was that he died and went to hell. And listen to the man again, again and again and again as George Whitfield preached to him the gospel of Christ, but he never surrendered. Why? He didn't believe the report. Maybe you would know men like George Whitfield or Charles Spurgeon or Billy Sunday or A.W. Tozer or, or Lester Roloff or Bob Jones Sr. Or, or Lee Robertson. Would you believe the report of these men as they stood? How that one day I was in a service and sitting in the back of the auditorium and a man of God got up and preached the word of God and I was so under conviction they gave an invitation and I went out the back door and got in my car. Drove about eight miles up the road, and as I was driving, the Holy Ghost of God was saying, you know what you heard was the truth. You simply have to surrender to it. And I drove up a long sandy driveway and slung the door open and ran out into a cornfield and got out on my hands and knees and said, oh God, I am so wicked, and I need a Savior. Would you come in my heart? And God saved me by the grace of God. Why? I believe the report. I simply believe the report. Isaiah asked this question. Who hath believed our report? You're in this congregation this morning, and my question to you this morning is this. Have you believed the report? Have you believed the report? Have you been exposed to truth? You know, over half the world's not heard anything about the truth. Half the world. What you're hearing this morning, most people would long to hear sitting on padded pews, 
a nice speaker system so you can hear nice and clear. Most people would beg for this. Have you been exposed to truth? Have you been exposed to someone's testimony? You've seen them before they got saved by the grace of God, and you've seen after they got saved by the grace of God, and you have seen with your own eyes and experienced with your own life the testimony of the redeeming power of God. Will you believe the report? You've been exposed to truth, the testimony, the teaching of the scriptures. Yet multiplied thousands of people will leave congregations this morning and say, I don't believe the report. Do you? Do you believe the report that Jesus Christ came, that he died, that he was buried, that he rose again, and he's coming again? That is the gospel. It is simple, but guess what? It's all powerful. I think about several things in the word of God that are hard to believe. I think about concerning the shaping of the worlds. That God took a handful of stars and planets and slung it into place one day and all of it is in place and running just great. What an evolution. Right. It was the power of God. Yeah. Amen. Do you believe in the shaping of the world, the cosmos and his creation, the crown of his creation, that God created a man and a woman in a garden and they were the beginning of the human race? Do you believe the report Concerning the shaping of the worlds? Number two, do you believe concerning the supply and wonder? The delivery through an ark? You know what the Bible said in 2 Peter chapter 3, verse number 4? It says, all things continue as they were. That's a lie. All things haven't continued as they were. Why? There was a flood that destroyed every single human being on the face of the earth. Every animal died except what was inside the ark. Every human being died except what was in the ark. Do you believe that report? We measure the age of bones by where they are located in the earth. Problem with that is there was a flood and everything that was on top is now underneath and everything that was underneath is now on top. And science says, well, you know, bones are clear down here and that's how old they are, really. Where were those bones to start with? They were on top. The flood came, and guess what? Now they're underneath. Yes, that is not a record. Right. Right. I wish my third grade teacher was here. <laughs> Do you believe the report concerning the delivery through the ark? What? The destruction involved, the delivery? That Noah got in that ark and got off that ark safe and sound. Do you believe the report concerning the design of a nation that God took two people named Abraham and Sarah and made a whole Jewish nation? You go to, go to Jerusalem this morning, there are millions everywhere from two people. Do you believe the report that all those Jewish people came from two people? I think about the design of a nation in their conception, in their captivity, 430 years. People say, well, you know, aliens built those pyramids. Is that right? Is that right? Aliens built pyramids. How about Jews built pyramids? The backs and sweats of Jewish people built every pyramid. Do you believe the report that the Jewish people came from Abraham and Sarah? their conception, their captivity, their crossing, that they came to the Red Sea, escaping from Egypt, and Moses simply raised the rod, and God opened up the Red Sea. You know, oftentimes in our mind, we, we fathom that as a one path and one person could go through. The problem with that is, in one night, all of the Jewish nation, anywhere from two million to three million Jews, crossed the Red Sea in one night. How wide did God open up the Red Sea? Wide enough for three million people to get across in one night and didn't even get mud on their shoes. 
And then the Egyptians came in after them and God closed it up on them and killed them. My question to you this morning is, do you believe the report of their conception, of their captivity, of their cross, of their country? We hear a lot in the news about the Jewish people. You know what I say? Palestinians get out. Get out. Yeah. Hey, Rabs, get out. Yeah. Get out. Why? That land belongs to the Jew. Yeah. Yes, sir. Do you believe the report according to God's word? I think about this and their daily need of, for the people, for his people. What? You know, one time God, God told Joshua, he said, Joshua was praying to God and said, you know, if I could just have... Just a little more daylight gone. I could win this battle. You know what the Bible says? God stood the sun still for a whole day is what it said. That'll throw you off. My question is this. Do you believe that report that God, the almighty creator of everything, took the sun and let it stand still so that Israel could win the battle? The daily needs of his people. You're worried about a light bill. Joshua said, God, would you make the sun stand still? You're worried about putting food on your table. Joshua said, I just want one thing. Could you make the sun stand still? I think about the daily needs of his people. What? More daylight. How about a meal from a depleted barrel? How that that woman there would dip down in that barrel. She knew there wasn't anything in the barrel, but uh, you know, by faith, she would dip down in and guess what? More biscuits. Hallelujah. <laughs> Evening time had come and the man of God said, you know, I'm getting a little hungry. Is there a little Debbie cake down in there? <laughs> no, Brother Jeff ate them all. Hallelujah. <laughs> More biscuits. That God fed them, if you'll study that out, for a whole entire year yeah. out of an empty barrel. Right. Yeah. My question to you this morning is, do you believe the report? Yeah. More daylight from a depleted barrel? How about delivering men from disease? There was a man with leprosy. Yeah. And the little girl said, guess what? If you could get down there to the prophet, yeah. if you could get down there to the man of God, he could help you out. So he goes, and the man of God said, I tell you what you do, go in the Jordan River and dip seven times, and he walks away. And he got mad. He said, isn't there rivers up where I come from? I could do that where I am. And his friend said, guess what? If he give you something hard to do, would you do it? To get rid of your leprosy, would you do something hard? He give you something simple to do. So he gets in the river. He dipped seven times, and guess what? The Bible said he came up whole. My question to you this morning is, do you believe the report? Do you believe the report concerning more daylight, a depleted barrel, delivery from disease? How about the mouth of a lion's den? Daniel in the mouth of a lion's den. Down in that, down in that den, and they put him in there to die. But the next morning, the king was at the door saying, Daniel, Daniel, are you okay? He said, I'm fine. I hope you're doing good out there because I'm doing good in here. <laughs> Do you believe the report that God sustained a man's life in a lion's den? I wouldn't recommend trying it at the zoo. <laughs> Not unless God is with you. I think about concerning the, concerning the supplication and wonder, people that prayed in the word of God and their prayer was answered. Do you believe the report concerning the liberation from false religion? False religion? That Elijah prayed 53 words and that the fire fell. And guess what? The Bible said all believed. Why? Because the prayers of one man of God. Do you believe the report concerning the supplication of wonder in life extension? Hezekiah 
sick and leaned his head against the wall is what it says. And he prayed and said, God, could you just give me a little more life? He lived 10 more years. Do you think God is able to do that? Maybe you're here this morning, you're sick. I don't know what God can do. I can tell you what he can't do. You come up here, my, put my hand on you, and you feel something, and you say, whoo, I got healed. No, that ain't going to happen. The only thing you can get off me is a little dirt. But I tell you, I know a God in heaven that can. I think about some things that are hard to understand in the word of God concerning the suffocation of wonder. The light reversed on the sundial. Hezekiah again. Would you rather go 10 degrees one way or 10 degrees back? He said, you know, it'd be more impossible for him to go 10 degrees back. And guess what happened? The sundial went 10 degrees back. My question to you this morning as you sit and listen to me, do you believe the report of the word of God? Do you believe the report concerning the scriptural wonder of this book? I think about the accuracy of the books. You know, I've been reading this thing 35 years. Almost every single day I read the Word of God, and guess what? I believe it. And the more I read it, guess what? The more I find that it's accurate in every area, every jot, and every tittle. The Word of God, the accuracy of this amazing book. I think about the ability of this amazing book. How that men of God can stand with the Word of God and preach the Word of God. And some sinner in the congregation begin to cry and come crawls up to an altar and gets up and says, I got saved by the grace of God. That's not in the power of men. That's in the power of the message. Do you believe the report concerning the accuracy of this book, the ability of this book, the answers of this amazing book? You know this book right here? Genesis to Revelations has Every answer to every problem yes, in life. Yes, sir. Every answer, every problem you're going through. There's a state senator sitting here. Guess what? The answer for Maryland is found in this book. The answer to this country is not in Trump, and I want him to win. Hallelujah. What else is the other option? But I do say this. He's not the answer this is. I tell you, if the people of God would get right with God, I tell you, we could have revival in this country and change the whole country. Not through a man, but through a message. My question is, do you believe the message? Do you believe the report? Do you believe the report concerning the Savior's work? That Jesus Christ came. According to Isaiah chapter 7, verse number 14, he was born of a virgin. Sinless. Nobody's ever been born that way in the past and never will be in the future. Jesus Christ was born of a virgin and he was clean and sinless all of his days. Do you believe the report? The Savior's delivery. The Savior's development. The Bible said he grew up as a tender plant. Do you believe the report about the Lord never sinning? Don't listen to Hollywood. Come on now. Tell it. Jesus Christ was sinless. He was never married. And he wasn't a homosexual. He was a sinless son of God. I think about the Savior's delivery. I think about his development. I think about his ded- dedication. The Bible said he set his face like a flint to go to the cross for you. Why would Jesus do that? He did that because he loved you and cared for you. I tell you, in 2020, we're in 2020, and 2,000 years ago as Jesus Christ was putting his face like a flint for the cross, he had you on his mind, and he cared about you. And that's why he went to the cross. My question to you this morning is this. Do you believe the report? Do you believe the report concerning his delivery, his development, his dedication? Do you believe his report concerning his death? that Jesus Christ personally died for you, that his blood was shed to wash away your sin. And if you'll put your faith and trust in what he did on Calvary, I tell you, he can cleanse every sin that you ever did and wash you clean. Do you believe it concerning his deliverance? That year after year, 
month after month, day after day, people are accepting the Lord Jesus Christ and being delivered from their sin because of what Christ did on the cross. We heard this morning, somebody said, that missionary said he had two, I believe it was two, had two saved by God's grace. What did they do? I tell you what they did. They put their faith in this story, in this report. They believe this report. I ask you this morning, do you believe the report that Jesus Christ came to this world, earth to set you free, to wash you clean, give you a new life, new hope, new joy that you've never had before? Do you believe the report concerning the salvation of the world? The calling of a sinner. Yes. I believe this. The Bible says this. If Jesus said this, if I be lifted up, I'll draw all men unto myself. Right. Right. What does that exactly mean? It means exactly what it said. Jesus Christ was lifted up. He's put on a cross. Yeah. And guess what? I believe this. I believe he speaks to every single yes, human sir. being in all yes, of the world personally. I'll give you a story. I was in... You know, I was in Bulgaria as a missionary, and I had a friend that was a pastor in Moldova. His name is Yuri. And Yuri used to be a communist soldier in the communist army in Moldova. His job was to guard a fence, and he would walk up and down that fence with a gun each night and guard the fence. I don't know what he's guarding, but that's what he did. And one night, lost, didn't know God, didn't, know, didn't have a Bible, didn't know anything about God. But he looked up in the stars, and the Bible said the heavens declare the glory of God. And Yuri began to look in the stars, and he said, God, if you're really real, could you please manifest yourself in some way to me? And he began to walk again. That night, his shift got done. He went home, went to bed, got up the next morning once again. Gun in hand, walking. All of a sudden, there was a rustling in a bush. And a man came up to the fence. He could have been shot, but he slipped a New Testament through the crack of that fence. And Yuri grabbed it and began to read it. And Yuri got saved by God's grace. And he now passes a church in Moldova. My question to you is, do you believe... The fact of the calling of the Savior. Has God spoken to you? You say, I'm lost and undone without God. But God has been speaking to me. He, what does he say when he does that? He said, come unto me, all you that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Do you believe the report concerning the calling of a sinner? Do you believe the fact of the conviction of a sinner? For four months, I worked with a crew, and those men would witness to me and talk to me, and conviction would set in. But that night, I went, and I heard, I heard Brother M.N. Pearson preaching that night. And as he preached, it was as though there wasn't anybody else in the building. I was the only one there. Yes, sir. Oh, yeah. And he was exposing everything I was and everything that was in my heart. And that man of God, as he preached, the more conviction came on my heart. But as I said, I got up and went out. And drove about eight miles up the road and asked Jesus Christ in my heart. Do you believe the report concerning the conviction of the sinner? I don't want to know necessarily when you got saved. I want to know when you got under conviction. When did God begin to deal with your sin, your lifestyle, who you are, your religious attributes, and say you're guilty and I died for you? Are you here this morning listening to me? I have a question. Do you believe the report of the calling of a sinner, the conviction of the sinner, the change of a sinner? Yes. When a sinner comes to Christ, guess what he does? He changes his direction, his desire, and his devotion. Without change, there is no salvation. You say, I got saved, but I, my lifestyle is the same as it always was. Really? Yeah. Somebody as big as God moves in your heart, and you're telling me there's no change. Amen. That ain't what happened to me. God changed me. Yes, yes. Yeah. How about the continuation of a sinner? 
He really wants you to get saved by God's grace, and I'm not a Calvinist. But I believe this, God will continue to work in your life, drawing you, drawing you. Now, when you reject that, you can reject that. But God is continually working in your life to get you closer to him. Well, why is that? Well, the Bible says this, we are to be made into the image of Christ. Right. Predestined is what it calls it. He says that predestined to be in the image of Christ. When a man gets saved by the grace of God, God begins to work in his life to make you like Jesus Christ. My question to you this morning is this. Do you believe the report? You're under the sound of my voice and you're lost as a goat. Lost as a ball in high weeds. And you say, man, I just need to surrender. There's an old-fashioned altar, and plenty, yeah. plenty of men in this church, plenty of women in this church will deal with your heart. If you're lost here and you don't know Christ, my question to you is, do you believe this report? There's no report like this report. God wants to save you by his grace. But guess what you have to do? You have to believe the report. You had to believe that Jesus Christ came, lived sinless, died on a cross, was buried, rose again, and is coming again. That is the gospel of Jesus Christ. And guess what? He did that because he loved you and cared for you with all of his heart. Will you believe the report this morning? Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we come before your throne. God, there may be one here, the Lord God, I pray, that doesn't know the Lord Jesus Christ as their Savior. I pray today, God, you'd speak to them, the Lord God. Now, I know you probably already have, but God, would you do that again this morning? And then, the Lord God, draw them as you do your net. Bring them, the Lord God, to an old-fashioned altar there in their pew to bow their head and ask Jesus Christ into their heart. God, we've talked about foreign missions all week. We've talked about foreign missions. Praise God for foreign missions. But God, this is a mission field right here this morning. Oh God, please have your way. Working hearts, I pray to Lord God. Save one sinner, I pray, on his way to hell. And we'll thank you in Jesus' name. Amen.